Yeah, gonna get locked in, you know, setting up for that. So we'll see what the response is gonna be from Cloud9. Zaya coming through. I do always like Zaya as a response to Wukong and Golden Guardians in general. I talked about it earlier. They've been playing heavy, heavy dive comps, yeah. lots of cannon, lots of melee champs throughout playoffs for Licorice as well. Uh, so the Zaya is gonna be a good response to that, and they're just gonna snatch that right up. Zaya and Rakan next to her. Remember that back in the first game where Golden Guardians had a big advantage, the Zeri was paired with Rakan as sort of the enchanter plus engager type of option. So if they lock in this Zeri for Stixay, nope, they're going to change it up. This time, uh -oh. they want to pilot the Lucian Nami. And they have done so successfully throughout playoffs. Golden Guardians, the other team that has really, really benefited from this duo. Now the question for Cloud9, do you want to snap up the Sejuani first, or are you fine to have Blabber drop into his very deep jungle champion pool? Yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting to see what the answer is. You know, so much of the series has felt about bot lane. You know, Vulcan on the desk talking about you know, what that prio through bot lane gives you, how much easier it is to play for the jungler, how much easier it is for your mid laner to play as well, and who he loves those roams toward mid. And Cloud9 are not going to be willing to give up everything. They are going to be grabbing this LeBlanc from the last game, Really the pick that I think MNS is most known for. And I love the fact that they're not afraid to just blind it, slap that pick down. They're not worrying about, oh, Flex pick Cassante or this other stuff that was getting beaten in the early game in the first couple of times. This ran the game. Why not run it back? I think now you definitely throw the Lissandra ban. You know, you protect it a little bit with your double bans here. Maybe even the Ari or something along the way as well. Yeah, I always do like solo pick, you know, solo lane pick on three for red side because you do the double protection ban after that. So you can kind of have a pretty good matchup generally there. And then you have your fifth pick counter pick, you know, for last. So you're going to get pretty good solo lane matchups generally across the board. We'll see what their second ban is going to be. As with the LeBlanc coming through, Lee Sin makes sense as a ban. You're generally going to be banning AD jungle pairings. Jarvan is still available. I'm not sure if he would be willing to go towards that. I can't really recall Blabber playing a lot of Jarvan in the past. Good oh. double bans here to protect it. Sejuani, I think, as well, even though it's not a big killer threat, super, super good for this draft right now uh, for Cloud9. So they might double ban mm -hmm. on jungle here. Golden Guardians got one band left to go next to that Lee. The Lissandra and Ari banned out by Cloud9. Gonna pinch the pool a little bit for Gory. What will it be, Golden Guardians? It's gotta count. Nocturne. Ooh. Blabber has been one of the earliest to return to Nocturne as far as LCS junglers go, uh, and does have a Rakan to play with for some super deep dives, so. Yeah, and, and like I was talking about, he hasn't played a single Jarvan game this whole split, so maybe they're thinking that is more of a likely AD jungle pairing. Uh, Xin Zhao, another Primo one that he could go towards, would make a lot of sense you know, playing towards that early game style that they did last game. Um, Poppy jungle, this is this is actually interesting, because this could be Poppy jungle or top, depending on the matchup. Yeah. I do actually think it's it's pretty viable in both. I don't know how you're feeling about Poppy jungle these days, Kobe. Poppy jungle, okay. I actually feel better about that than the Xin Zhao. To me, Xin is so risky, especially in yeah. pro play. There's just so many ways where you can get caught out. You have to blow your ult, you have to blow your flashes, and you become a liability in a lot of these scenarios where you do not get really good duels. And Poppy has a very potent ability to stop the dashes of champions like Wukong or like Lucian. Remember, if Lucian tries Alice to dash in to finish somebody off, that could be a problem. Silas is up. Malphite's locked in, Galio's locked in. Will they take the Silas? Give me Silas top. I, I want to see it. I think Silas should go top. You put Blabber in the jungle uh, and just lock that in, man. If Fudge is comfortable playing it, there are some really good ultimates to steal. The Wukong ult is great. Uh, Lucian ultimate can be great. Chunk people down prior. Galio ultimate is really effective. Malphite ultimate is ready. Like, I, I think across the board is really strong. This would be a little bit of a surprise to me. You can run them over early, but if you do not, it does get difficult. I will say, though, you ignore basically all the CC, and that is going to be the key thing here, is Galio is not going to be able to stop you. Nami Wave not going to be able to stop you. You're just going to be charging straight for this Wukong. So they're kind of betting it all on it. Golden Guardians is a wombo combo team. Malphite, Wukong, Galio engaged here with Nami Wave coming through as well. It is an all-in type of situation, and since Fudge will be looking for those you know, 1v1s with tanks and be able to go CC immune for the team fights too. Rest of Cloud9 are pretty mobile. Zaya with the ultimate here for disengage. LeBlanc always fishing around yeah. uh, side angles too. We'll see how effectively Golden Guardians can actually corral this team. And it is going to be interesting because potentially, you know, we, we could have seen a lot of MR stacks had it been a Silas, so maybe they're worried about top side, you know, going too much value from that. But, you know, picking an AD matchup into the Malphite is all.
Let's do it. Game number four. If C9 win it, they're your champions. Their first seed at MSI. They are the ones walking away with the trophy, and the games are done. If Golden Guardians wins, the all too familiar tune of Silver Scrapes plays again in Raleigh. There's double sweeper start here for Cloud9, so they're definitely going to go hunting for some of these wards. Sven clears out bottom side. MNS still has another sweeper to activate, so they could go looking for the one behind red, but it doesn't look like they're bringing anyone else. Okay, let's look around and see exactly what we've got everywhere this game. Ghost teleport on both of our top laners. You already mentioned Licorice having it just to try to deal with the Olaf letting it him. Ignite for MS's LeBlanc in the mid lane for extra kill threat. Too. Yeah, it is Ignite and Electrocute. So this is maximum burst here that they are really looking for. You know, it's not just about that lane, but it is potentially against Stixay being able to really chunk him out. It's kind of a, a one carry He's threat. Find that ward. He's going to find the ward. MNS goes in for the late kill on the ward. We'll get the level two. So, yeah, with Ignite, with Electrocute, all these things you're talking about for the level uh, level two power spike here for LeBlanc, he's going to go very hard on Gory. We'll see. Do they want to get aggressive here? And remember how strong Zaya and Rakan are at level one. If they can get the jump on you, these two can do so much damage. Berserker and Zvan playing it very patiently. Yeah, who he seems well aware of it. He's staying further back. Really, he's the only one you could look for that kind of full-on all-in on uh, because he's not playing cleanse. The Fudge trying to play this aggressive. They do catch that Lucian there. Cleanse can be popped and flash. They get both summoner spells out wow. of the Lucian. It cost them their ignite and their heal, but critically, both C9 players still have the flash. Well, yeah, exactly, and that puts a huge target on 6 A's back. No cleanse. Blabber has flash. You can get your butt down there as a jungler and see what you can make happen. Gory gets locked down. m &S with the ignite. One more auto attack, they do it! First blood, ignite, electrocute, execution in the mid lane. Oh my goodness, he makes that LeBlanc pocket pick work. Gets the experience off the extra ward here. Gory still level one teleporting back the lane. And m &S just dinging three. Yeah, Gory was one minion short of actually getting level two there. You know, all the melees have been killed for MNS, so he had been level two for a while, and Gory was trying to push for that last final minion to get to himself. Couldn't quite get it. Now Blabber up to top side. This is one of the weaknesses of this Malphite. A stacked wave early on. You cannot deal with these dives well. Okay, they're gonna start it off with Blabber slamming him into the wall. They kill him so easy. Cloud9 gets their second kill. And look at the farm. He got three CS there up in that top lane before basing. After that death, he spends the ghost. There's no flash to outplay. It's better in this in the extended 1v1, but he loses so much. And yes, he's gonna be able to pick up some of that farm after he TP's back, but his buy was irrefillable. That's it. <laughs> That's really bad. And Blabber didn't have to blow a flash for that either. He can now clear bottom side and look for bottom bottom side plays as well. Here's MS again, staring him down with the level two, distortion in, chain hits, ignite down, you're dead. And Gory's just trying to get in range for that XP. He's not even trying to CS. You know, he's just trying to stand in range, soak those melees. And this is one of the big weaknesses of Malphite. People will talk about it. Yeah, Malphite is really strong if you let him get through the laning phase. But in the early levels, he's very weak. Pops the ghost to try to make something happen. But the angle is found by Blabber. And that buckler keeps him alive from that final turret shot as well. Really good execution on that. And Licorice is going to have a hell of a time in this lane now. Blabber coming bottom, looking for another gank. He shoves Stixa back. The blade caller gets him rooted. They need one more auto from Berserker, and they get it. Cloud9, 3-0. Blabber is coming up huge. He does exactly. Oh, oh nice is from Hui. <laughs> Blabber does exactly what we're talking about, though. He gets the kill on top side, and then bottom side never expects an immediate rotation over there to go for the second kill. Blabber skips all his bottom camps. He goes straight from the top side tower dive into a bottom side tower dive. The extra kill going over, though, big stuff from Huhi to grab one back. Yeah, really nicely done. Berserker, though, could go aggressive here. That looks like a dead Nami on my screen. Nicely done. Berserker's eating sushi, and it looks like Huhi. Beautiful from the 80 carry. 2 0 and 0 on the Zaya, and now MS is getting away from River. The Wukong has not been able to get involved in the game yet, while Blabber is 1. Oh, and one C9's early game feeling good in game four. Yeah, really, really big, especially because it's not just two regular ganks, it's two dives, right? Being able to pull those off, it's so frustrating when the wave is stacked towards you, you miss out on all that farm. And a two kill lead for Berserker. 
huge performance in the previous game, set up for success in this game on the Zaya, one of the most safe AD carries that you can have, even when looking at the tremendous amount of dive that Golden Guardians have drafted. And we can see it one more time. Blabber just wrapping around. They had the tri brush pink warded. I don't think he was spotted here. Uh, and I believe, you know, just goes straight on in. Flashes behind him, knocks him back into the team. There was no cleanse, there was no flash. The follow up route is there from Berserker and just gets that final auto before pulling it back. Then trying to just get these, uh, probably tries to get the execute on the cannon minion, and it's just going forward to get those Targon stacks. Who he flashes in, catches him with the W bounce. Really nicely done to get one back. <laughs> yep. Who he was eyeballing him. <laughs> Berserker laughing as his lane mate goes down. He's still happy though. He's got his money. The money for Cloud9, over a thousand gold ahead, just six minutes in. That Drake is spawned. It is a first Drake being Cloud, which means generally it's not going to have that powerful early impact like something like an Ocean or a Hextech would. So teams might not prioritize it as heavily, but Cloud9 has control over the game right now. Blabber with the Ionian Boots of Lucidity already purchased, right back out onto the map, walks over a control ward, and may be able to set up for a Drake play here with Berserker and Sven controlling bot. Yeah, absolutely. And, and while I totally agree with you, Cloud is not the best early dragon, it has been such a priority in this series. And across our playoffs in general, so many games playing for Soul. He's got Hex Flash over this wall. They know that they just actually cleared out Tribrush, so they could potentially look for something again, but uh, Golden Guardians are not contesting at Tribrush, so I think Blaver is probably going to pull back and just look towards this dragon play. Yep. Walking up north now. Or thinking about it, thinking about it. Sven's really testing these guys. You have to be very careful when messing around with a dive now because Galio is level six and Golden yeah. Guardians are a very ult reliant team. So once they get Wukong ultimate as well, expect them to look for a big play. River and Gori have consistently throughout this entire playoffs been big, big mid game factors for the Golden Guardians. And I think especially with Blabber having no flash and knowing that Six A's sums are both back up, it would be a really ill-advised dive to try to go for unless they have them super chunk. So instead, they'll pull back, they have the cover on that push from Blabber, and they grab that first dragon. Taking the freebie, seven and a half minutes in. Pretty much expected for the timer so far. River's only level five. MS just jumps in to kill him. They force the Galio ulti to keep River alive. That's the type of mid laner you want, Captain Flowers. One that will hunt the enemy jungler get the Galio ultimate down already. Now you don't have to worry about that big play we were setting up. Oh, and you know what the worst part of it is? It's a three minute cooldown on the Galio ultimate. This early on, he's got no CDR and he's got level one on that ulti. So he's not getting to see that thing again for a long time. You would have loved to have something like that for a Rift Herald fight, but unfortunately for Golden Guardians, I think Cloud9 is going to want to force that before they get a chance to have the cooldown back. Who he has rotated up into the mid lane. MS with the flash into chains. Who he gets bound up. Now he's got to try to get away. Blabber wants the angle for the charge, but he just ends up inting it. He got too thirsty for the kill. Too hypey there, Blabber. <laughs> he definitely wanted too much because Cloud9 already were set up with some pretty good uh, scenarios here for that Rift Herald. And now it is a Golden Guardian's turn. That's what you get with Blaber, man. He's going to play really aggressive, and Blaber will give it. Look, Blaber will also take it away. And too aggressive on that play. It wasn't a nice initial play, not getting that knockback and trying to set it up, but they didn't have the damage to do it. Man, you want to talk about aggressive? Fudge is going in with the Ragnarok, chasing after River, forces him back. Now Sven and MS are trying to put more damage on the remaining players. Fudge gets thrown up into the air by Licorice. Blaber tackles Licorice, just trying to keep him away from Fudge. Everybody's going after everybody all over these small skirmishes here in the larger fight. Licker is still hanging around, trying to clear out some of these wards. Won't get the last hit on that one. Even S and Sven moving forward. Blabber finds a charge into the wall, but it's only under River's clone. Now Sven's wanting to lock down Licorice, and Even S gets the kill. A gory taunt only finds one, and he doesn't have the damage to finish off Fudge. Fudge gets the kill back, and Cloud9 get two. Blabber, he hex flashes over, and he pins Licorice against the wall, knowing there's no mouth by ultimate, and he's spellbuck on the, on the ghost over there. there there, I mean, he's not even Spellbook, he's Graspa. His, his ghost is permanent, so there's no way he's getting out of there. And he finally will get the Rift Herald. It's classic Blabber. Yeah, he, he ints on one play, but then he gets, gets, right right, back. gets right back up and makes a big play in its place. Yeah, absolutely. And Golden Guardians, 
And it just stuck around too long. When you don't have Wukong ultimate, when you don't have Malphite ultimate, these champions are not going to get much done for you. Lucian's down on bot side, so they really had no business, I think, staying around this long. This initial play, you know, Fudge is going in aggressive with the ulti. As soon as the ult, the, the flash is forced, his ult is going to expire, so he's just going to back it up. But then you can see Licorice at the top of your screen spends his ulti here very aggressively on flash, and I just didn't really think there was anyone in the area to follow up. You know, you look how far away Gory is. He doesn't have ult, who he's... You know, not in position either, so they're never gonna have the damage to make it happen. Now they're gonna look for a dive again. Blabber with those hex flashes just won't give him a break. Fudge gets the kill, 7-2 C9. Blabber is having a hell of a game here. You know, River, I think, outperforming in the first two games, especially in the early game, and Blabber took that personally. Coming back with a vengeance here in game three and again in game four. And the beneficiaries are all of his carry teammates here. Every lane for Cloud9 is a carry champion. So Blabber having success in all three lanes with these ganks is setting up everybody with gold leads across the board. You can see bounties already on all three of them. I mean, it's, it's going to be a tough one for Golden Guardians. And they do have really good engage, but it's so difficult to actually lock down any of these carries. You know, who do you go for? The LeBlanc can just throw it away. Uh, the Zaya who has ultimate or Fudge. Oh, River, he's just going to die if he isn't careful. Or maybe they can turn it around instead. Beautifully done. They reinforce their jungler and they shut down him and ass. The magic damage shield from that Galio ultimate coming in clutch, just barely keeping him alive. They spend a lot to get the kill, but they do get that kill on MNS. Remember, too, whenever you're playing these little skirmishes 50 seconds before a dragon, now that long cooldown is not going to be there. Mm -hmm. Wukong ult, Galio ult, Malphite ultimate. That is the composition for Golden Guardians. That's the whole thing right there. And they got one kill, but Cloud9 with a Rift Herald and a Dragon coming their way, probably like those timers. Absolutely, and I think for sure Golden Guardians are just gonna have to give it up. Oh, here's another again. flash play. Blabber slams him into the turret. The follow-up from Sven to throw Gory into the air as Berserker uses the blade call oh. to get the kill. They find him, and they're gonna find multiple plates to go with it. MS wants to get Stixay, but with who he behind him, it's MS who's in trouble. He gets out with 200 HP, but he has to abandon the turret. Blabber wraps around now, but he finds a control ward, so he can't just make the surprise move. Yeah, and Blabber's very low, so this would be risky. He's gotta wait for reinforcement here. Zven arrives, you can see Berserker is pushing out mid lane, and you look picture in picture, this is Fudge getting aggressive in that 1v1. He might take this. Nope, okay. but he does get the ghost out of Licorice instead. Should be the dragon there for Cloud9 because of the mid lane dive. And again, not having those ultimate cooldowns that make up the entire identity of the Golden Guardians comp. So Cloud9 still very happy with that one, even though it gets a little dicey on the bottom side of the map. MNS playing around with the Lucian Nambi combination. Doesn't bite him this time around though. And C9 get to push their plan forward. Two dragons now with that 3000 gold lead. Blabber. Somebody might have to get him a backup flash key because he's going to wear this first one out with the hex flashes <laughs> and flashes, ganking every single lane on cooldown. He just isn't stopping with the playmaking here in the match point game for C9. Golden Guardians have got to find some way to stop this bleeding. Cloud9 just keeps accelerating the game. The two Drakes means that if they get just one more, then the pressure's on for the rest of the game. Because they've been started early, that could happen easily before 20 minutes. And with not controlling the Rift Herald, Golden Guardians are struggling to find themselves a decent footing to try to come back, to try to find any spot to fight from. And I gotta say, MNS's build is, is a little bit perplexing to me. It looked like almost like he's just going like straight like Shadow Flame or something first, you know, not going towards a, a Mythic right away. It's a little bit confusing. Just rushing that spell pen, I guess. Normally you will see players go for one of the Mythics that provides the spell pen bonus yeah. on completion. But Cloud9 now seeing if maybe they might be able to catch the Golden Guardians in the river here. River and Gori both still hanging around. The Galio ulti not quite up. Kobe, you said it earlier. Golden Guardians, the composition is the three ults from the top side. If those three are not available, you do not fight. Exactly. And Cloud9 know it. And they've been playing around it quite nicely. Blabber constantly forcing plays all over the map here, getting these cooldowns out so that Cloud9 can keep such a quick pace. Meanwhile, Fudge on the Olaf has had a time of his life up there, popping his ultimate whenever he wants versus Licorice. Holds it this time. 
Fudge is ready. He's popping the ghost. He's got Ragnarok. They want to take Licorice down. They'll get him, but Fudge is going to die in trade. Blabber looking to see if he can get an angle on somebody valuable. Tries to slam who he into the wall. Doesn't quite get the terrain connection. I mean, S jumps in really close to bursting Stick Say down there, but not quite enough damage. Yeah, not quite enough damage to actually finish him off. And I've just been thinking about it because it was actually a full on Shadow Flame rush, which I don't know that I've seen before. You know, it does have the flat 20 spell pen that is there if someone has been recently affected by a shield. So Malphite, passive shield. Galio, passive shield. Nami, Aerie is going to apply a shield as well. So maybe he's just feeling that he's going to get enough value out of that passive. I have no idea on the math on this. But against a lot of these champions, he's going to have the full straight 20 spell pen most of the time. It is a lot combined with Sorcerer's Shoes, yeah. combined with what I, what I am expecting to be the sudden impact rune to give you the extra M pen on dash. So maybe there is some sort of a secret there with manipulating the amount of he's shields. He's cooking. We don't know if it's good or not, but he's cooking. Yeah, something. I don't know what's in the food, but something <laughs> might be cooked. garbage, but it might be brilliant. <laughs> might be delicious. We'll have to wait and see. As Cloud9 still has about the same lead they had a couple of minutes ago, Golden Guardians at least, things aren't getting any worse, but they're not getting any better. And with the Rift Herald coming up, it might get worse a little bit quicker. <laughs> they can push in on this top tower and get second Rift Herald without really a response from Golden Guardians. They could try and push out mid, but Cloud9 already deleted that minion wave, so they're going to be able to grab this one, and all they have to do is alert Fudge, hey, guess what? You are weak side. There are two objectives on the top side of the map, so play safe. First turret destroyed, top lane. That's a 4,000 gold lead for C9. Golden Guardians trying to get a little bit of control here around the bottom side river. Do they even want to fight for this third Drake? They're so far behind that they really have to consider. Is it worth it to try to stop them from reaching soul point now? Or do you just cut the losses and then have to fight every Drake thereafter? I think they kind of fight because you look over at Cloud9's side, none of them are on two items. And you all have your one item completion point. So I think as far as the gold deficit goes, you know, this is about as good as it's going to get. Okay. Because if you think if you wait to the next dragon after that, Cloud9 will for sure have their next item completion. Uh, something worth pointing out, though, Sven going for the Even Shroud, which I am really a fan of. I actually think it's a lot better than Shirelius in most cases. The bonus damage during CC is really, really powerful. Yeah. And he's also grabbed a stopwatch here, so he is going to have some pretty heavy playmaking ability you know, in this next fight. And with the advantage Cloud9 have already built, one big sweeping victory in a fight can put this game from tough but manageable to unmanageable without a throw territory for the Golden Guardians. So I really want to see this Wombo combo pop off if Golden Guardians intend to fight for this Drake. The Wukong, the Malphite, the Galio all need to be on the same page. Gori's ulti still not up just yet. That icon has not fully cooled down. All right, Golden Guardians are on a timer right now because they've got an Olaf beating down top turret, a Rift Herald taking mid turret for the Zaya. And time is just not working in their favor. They're going to try and rush down this dragon, but they're going to lose so much gold for it. And Blabber can still get here for a possible ultimate on the poppy into a steal. They're going to TP in. They're going to look for this. Sven is in the back of the pit now. Blabber knocks Licorice away, and now they're ready to fight. Blabber jumps into the middle of three, but now he has to disengage as River's ready to try to get a kill back. Fudge. Six day fires off the calling. Fudge is ready to fight in the middle of everyone. The Ragnarok for the CC immunity as Berserker goes on a rampage, and they kill Stixay. Now River's got the kill at least back on the blabber, but it's a double for Berserker and Licorice, who he and Gory all have to run. Beautiful macro there from Cloud9, pushing top, Rift Herald mid, then coming in with the Poppy ultimate to section across oh, Golden no. Guardians. MNS isn't done, who he is going to live another day. They get so much from that. I mean, they got the tier two top before he even TP'd in. They got a crash on that mid tier two as well. So that is an auto or two away from actually getting finished off. They're pushing down bot lane. Cloud nine are getting so close to their title here. So close to finishing the series against Golden Guardians. We can watch this fight one more time. Boop, goodbye Fudge. And then Blabber goes for the initiation onto the Golden Guardians bottom lane. He gets Wukong ult, Galio ultimate, and both of them pinned over there towards the wall, but uh, we've got a dead Lucian on our screen. All that's left is his guns. So well, about that Shadow Flame, <laughs> guessing MNS uh, is working. <laughs> Tastes and good. With the enemy AD carry dead for the third time this game, Cloud9 now have a free soul point. That's three Drakes to nothing for this squad. 
man, the Golden Guardians are in a rough spot. They absolutely are. And we can see this m &S, you know, from Fog is really strong, has so much flat pen. As soon as 6A dashes in, he knows he's got him because he had already spent the flash and the cleanse in the previous fight. That dash alone was all he needed to have that go button. Goes in, knocks him down. Yeah. No crazy mechanics needed in a double distortion there. <laughs> First hit him down. So what's the plan, my friends? If Ooh. you're Golden Guardians, do you just cross your fingers and pray that you get the setup for the three ulties? Yeah. I mean, you have to. That's the, that's the only thing your comp has, right? So it's got to be perfect Malphite ult, Wukong ult over top, Galio ult over the top. Somehow Lucian isn't getting killed off by the Olaf and whatnot, and the fight <laughs> just happens, right? Um, but it, it, I talked about it earlier. Who do you target with this? Do you, are you confident you can 100 0 the LeBlanc before he moves from CC and distorts away? Are you confident you can actually kill off the Zaya before Zaya can react with the ultimate? Are you confident you can burst down this Olaf who has a jack show? Because I'm not confident that they can do it to anyone. Who he always has to be so careful, man. Because Imanast is just trying to do this every time. Not quite enough damage to get the kill. But they put him at 100 HP. They get both of his summoner spells. And they send him back to the fountain as they can continue applying pressure in the top side jungle of Golden Guardians. It's just so difficult because versus LeBlanc towards the later stage of the game, you usually want a point and click to make it so the LeBlanc can't at will go for these poke combos. But guess what? You don't want to expend your full team composition, yeah. Malphite ultimate and everything on the LeBlanc that's just poking you. And it's even hard to pin him down. So MNS is being very annoying while the rest of Cloud9 can just retreat back to this Baron. 5,000 health and dropping, but Golden Guardians are here. Golden Guardians want to fight for it. Blabber with a nice disengage. That's the power of the Poppy. There's no steal ever when Poppy can just throw you back home. Cloud9 get the Baron and they disengage. This game is one giant Poppy gap, okay? Blabber has successfully ganked every single lane, as well as ejecting Golden Guardians members for these objectives. They're gonna dive. Nice, can they actually kill him? Yes, Dixay gets the kill with the, one of the shots from the culling. They get the objective bounty on the tier one. That's kind of the only way they're killing him and S, and they found the angle. Yeah, they did get the kill, but just barely, even throwing everything in the kitchen sink. That's Malphite ult, that's uh, the Nami ult, the Lucian ult, everything expended there, including the Gale Force. And now Cloud9 knows we got nothing to be scared of. We're just gonna walk straight at you. We have a big gold lead. You don't have any of your tools to fight, and Blabber found Blabber is not happy, just trying to steal away a red buff. He wants another kill, but who he manages to escape as Blabber heads back to the red now to finish what he started. Fudge is pushing up mid, using the Baron for that. The minion wave is going to join him soon. Licorice is up in top lane, just trying to get an objective bounty on the tier one. Close the gold gap a little because they know they only have two minutes until the ocean soul spawn. And Licorice doesn't have his ulti anyway, so him being grouped with the team doesn't really do much of anything for them. I think he's just going to continue trying to push this out. He'll base now and try to regroup with the team, but Cloud9 are just extending the gold lead so damn fast. It's up over 8,000 now. And this Ocean Soul is going to be available here in 130. We'll have to see, is, is Golden Guardians even going to leave their base to try to fight for that? Because that would really be staking your finals on that one fight. That would be their final shot. But you have to think, if you give over Ocean Soul, there's not really much of a chance. There's not much of a backup plan yeah. to be able to fall back on here. So they kind of have to. Cloud9 with the remnants of the Baron buff. It was nullified a bit by the Golden Guardian's plan to dive MS and get that tower. So even though they're in such a bad situation, they were still able to make some sort of play out of it and get the mid turret, get that single kill. Now you just got to kind of hope and just sit on Fog of War, sit on these control wards. And you can tell Cloud9 are very confident, very comfortable in their current position in the game. We saw the very stoic player cams earlier. This game, we saw Berserker having a good time. We saw question mark pings on Blabber's failed hex splash because they're not worried. They know they can just disengage these plays. They know how far ahead they are, and they know how dire this game state is for the Golden Guardians. 25 seconds left for the Baron buff for C9. 30 seconds until the Drake spawns. Yeah, this is going to be a really tough one here for Golden Guardians. And Cloud9 just need to keep them pinned in their base because they know there's no vision. Look at the mini-map. You know, where is the, their farthest forward ward? They got one up here on that top side. It is a dark and scary place outside of the Golden Guardians base. So it just doesn't feel like they're even in a position where they could try to attempt to steal or anything whatsoever. MS so fearless on the LeBlanc. Over the wall. 
just goofing around in the enemy base, seeing what kind of damage he can get down, keeping everybody distracted. As long as LeBlanc is the first thing on your mind, Drake can't be. MS jumps over the wall, quick little snap of damage onto Stixe, right back to his origin point. Because the entire time, the Drake was taken, and it's Ocean Soul for Cloud9. Now that LeBlanc got even more annoying, MS can keep going for these poke distortions, and even if you can get some chip damage on him, if you don't kill him, he's healing right back up. Fudge on the top side has been living here, constant pressure, and Cloud9 now with the Ocean Soul. Really not much standing between them and a repeat finals. Blabber said this is one thing that he really still needs to accomplish in his career, career and he's putting in a lot of work to do at this game. Blabbers, Poppy, one, two, and seven. 66% kill participation, the highest on the team here for Cloud9. We don't have anybody with like that 90%, 100% KP because of the fact the fights have been all over the place. It's been yeah. small skirmishes. Everybody's not involved in these huge team fights, which is a good demonstrator of Cloud9 playing the game in a way that doesn't let Golden Guardians comp succeed. Because Golden Guardians want to fight 5v5. Absolutely, and that's why you have MNS off on the side looking for these solo missions. Fudge constantly split pushing. They're not allowing them these opportunities to just group five, walk it down mid and have a 5v5, right? Now that is really what Golden Guardians is hoping for, but Cloud9 are denying them at every turn. And while Blabber does not have 100% KP, he has been so instrumental in creating this advantage yeah. in this game. You know, multiple dives in the early minutes of the game. Goes top, finds that dive on a stack wave, goes bot, gets another dive, is constantly aggressive and finding plays for Cloud9. And I will say his solo laners have also helped out in the jungle fight a lot. Mm -hmm. Both m and finding River in the jungle, igniting him, chunking him out, burning Galia ultimates, then Fudge as well, popping the Olaf ultimate, chasing down the Wukong, burning his own ultimate. The Soul laner's been attacking that Wukong as much as Blabber has been attacking the laners for him. Absolutely, and I think it's a great point. You know, the, the Galio ultimate is such a key component of this composition, it just never really felt like they got to use it aggressively. Every single time, it has to be used to just bail someone out, try to save someone, which yeah. allows Cloud9 to just disengage from the fight. Never once have we seen that used aggressively as they're diving in on someone's head. Fudge in bottom lane now. This I don't even know if they win Olaf. that 1v2. Yeah, no, there's absolutely no way they win that. He's got Jack Show. He's got the plated steel caps. He's got Randowins. Wukong can't do any meaningful damage yeah. to him. I'm pretty sure he heals through whatever Galio's going to do. Plus, he's got Ocean Soul. Ravenous to heal him up. This guy is just an absolute war machine here in this side lane. There's all the damage gone. Right back up to full HP. Now he can go back into the jungle of the enemy team. That vision that you talked about earlier, Isaac, it's getting even darker for the Golden Guardians. I think this Baron has Cloud9's name all over it. They're gonna keep Golden Guardians pinned inside the base and just let Berserker melt that thing. And I think at this point, you know, for Golden Guardians, oh, they're gonna go for a pick. We'll see if they can find it. They wanna try to catch Fudge That's here. Not. Fudge wasn't, he still has the Ragnarok. He hasn't even used it. There, he finally claims it, throws the undertow back. The angle isn't there on the culling. Oh, now oh. Ben swoops through him. They can't even kill Fudge. They threw the kitchen sink at him, and he didn't care. And look at top lane. They're already pushing the base here. Gonna be able to crack this first inhibitor turret. Uncontested Cloud9 are getting closer and closer to this championship. They can taste it, pushing down multiple lanes with the Baron buff. This could be the last stand for Golden Guardians. Golden Guardians got to try to fight here. They have no Malphite ult, they have no Wukong ult, they have no top lane inhibitor, and they have no gold to compare to Cloud9. Berserker is dominating. They knock one of the remaining defenders away as River is forced back into the fountain, or at least the clone was. Now Cloud9 is going to finish off the real deal. River falls. Liquor is about to go next. Dorian, who he stand alone. Cloud9, don't lose a man. They march through the Nexus turret. They march through the remaining players. They're the champ, and they're the champ back to back. The LCS shines bright blue, and Cloud9 are your spring 2023 champion. What a series, what a battle between these two teams. Cloud9, everyone gathering around MS there, who is overcome by emotion, subbed in 
for this team halfway through the split, thought by many to be one of the best, if not the best mid laner in the league. And he takes victory here already with Cloud9 in his first split. Cloud9, the organization. Going to game four, the early pick that will block before can be banned away. They take away the Olaf. They are the ones looking to be aggressive. And they are the ones who, as a result, will hoist the LCS trophy for LCS 2023 spring. Hoist it high, boys. Cloud9 will be the LCS's number one representative at the upcoming international competition at MSI. Golden Guardians will follow right behind them as the number two representative. And MS, you can just see how much it means to him, to all these guys. Blaber spoke about wanting to get his fourth title, wanting to get it in that back to back format. Sven, wool swapping from AD carry down to support getting it done again and again. Berserker showing us that he's not just the MVP because of a Draven.